All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Marina Zurahinskaya will be, uh, well, she is uh, a good friend of mine as well as um, uh, the main organizer for the GNOME Outreach Program for Women, which CPython is, contributing for, uh, is participating in for the first time this summer. Um, she's also on the boards of the GNOME Foundation and the Ada Initiative, uh, and she does all kinds of really great outreach with Red Hat. Uh, so please uh, join me in welcoming Marina for her talk on Outreach Program for Women Lessons in Collaboration. Hi, everyone. Um, so I work at Red Hat as a community engagement lead. And as Jessica said, uh, I'm on the boards of the Ada Initiative and the GNOME Foundation. And the Ada Initiative is the organization that um, works on supporting women in open technology and culture. And the GNOME Foundation uh, is an organization that supports uh, the GNOME uh, desktop for Linux. And uh, so I'll be talking about the Outreach Program for Women, and it has its origins in 2006 when um, GNOME received uh, 181 applications for Google Summer of Code, and none of them appeared to be from women. And Google Summer of Code is a program where Google pays um, a stipend uh, for students to work remotely with a mentor for three months uh, on a free software project. And um, when um, Chris Ball and Hannah Wallach uh, saw that this was a case that we didn't get any applications from women, they put together a, a two-month program uh, just that very same summer that uh, invited women to participate directly and had um, a more collaborative language. Uh, so instead of uh, saying, prove you're a rock star, show you as the best, um, it uh, was talking about how this is an opportunity to work with a mentor and learn. And they received about 100 applications and uh, six women uh, did internships uh, with GNOME that summer. Um, then nothing happened for um, a couple years, and uh, in 2009, I found myself to be one of uh, eight women at GNOME's um, annual conference. And um, I was perhaps one of the uh, most established female developers uh, in GNOME at the time, and the uh, GNOME board approached me to organize uh, the outreach program for women or renew our outreach initiatives. And uh, before I dive in into uh, how the program works, um, this is like a very strong motivation for the program. Um, things like this happen. This is uh, from this year where one of the participants um, in Outreach Program for Women was approached at uh, forced them uh, by what I assume were well-meaning men, telling her that they were surprised to see a girl there. And uh, this is why it's uh, very important uh, to have support communities for women. Um, to um, kind of show to each other that yes, we do belong here. And also it's important to have um, people working on, um, in a dedicated way on providing best practices, resources such as what uh, the EDA initiative does and the Geek Feminism Wiki. And I'd like to encourage everyone to read um, a recent blog post uh, by the EDA initiative. Uh, called Breaking the Unicorn Law. And the uh, unicorn law says that any woman in free software will sooner or later be asked to do a talk about being a woman in free software. Um, so I, I, I do believe we are breaking uh, this um, already, uh, but this blog post also provides great resources for how you can find out um, about the experience of women in free software without approaching new women in your community directly and asking them to represent all other women and where, like how you can get more women participating. Uh, so instead, I'd recommend reading this blog post. It has the resources. Um, in particular, supporting initiatives such as the Outreach Program for Women, the Ada Initiative, um, paying attention to the career development of women you're working with, and uh, taking uh, the Ada Initiative Allies workshop or going over the resources that are online uh, that can um, that cover how to respond to sexist incidents and how to best support women. So in terms of the outreach program for women, um, it is uh, very much similar to Google Summer of Code. We have uh, paid uh, three months inter um, remote internships, and as they happen twice a year, one round happens from May to August, and as a round, happens from uh, December to March. Uh, the difference are that um, it's open to all women. They don't have to be students. And we also learned that it's important to state explicitly that it's uh, open to 
women that are, um, to people who have uh, various gender identities. So it's open to women who are cis and trans and to gender queer people. And uh, the default language um, is uh, exclusive, ex exclusive by default. So, which is why, for example, it is important for us to say that it's open to women, cis, and trans in all our major announcements of flyers. And also, uh, non-coding projects such as documentation and design are available as part of the program in addition to the coding projects. And we've had uh, seven rounds of internships. 130 participants uh, with all of those organizations. And uh, these are some of the sponsors that I'd like to say a big thank you to. And also, Red Hat contributes my time to organizing the program, and Robes and Gray is a law firm that has uh, helped us draft contracts for participants and mentors. So how we do it? Um, in addition to addressing our participants, uh, the audience that we're tra targeting directly, and being open to non-students and non-coders, a very important part of the program is that it has uh, a collaborative application process. So all the mentors for a particular organization are listed uh, online on the organization page. And what we ask our applicants to do is to connect with the mentor during an application process and uh, make a contribution um, with the mentor's help that is relevant to the project that they are proposing to work on. And that really serves as um, something that allows all the applicants to learn how to contribute to free software community and also serves as a very important selection criteria for us. And during the program, it's a time uh, to focus for the interns and to build their experience contributing to free software. And uh, very importantly, we ask our participants uh, to blog every two weeks. And we incorporate uh, their blogs on the organization's planets and also on the women in free software planet, uh, which is it's a great planet. I recommend reading it. It's, I find it very inspirational. Um, also, as part of the program, we have a $500 travel allowance, and the participants can use it to travel to a conference or to an event where they can meet a mentor in the community. And after the, prog uh, after the program, uh, the mentorship continues, and we have um, uh, we talk to participants about their career interests. So, uh, Samana Hurihurswar has done a tremendous job talking to, to people participating in the program and talking to the mentors about how we need to um, be proactive about addressing uh, the participants' future career plans. And um, we uh, encourage the participants to go on and present at conferences. And here, for example, I take <laughs> cues from Jessica because uh, she has been just doing a tremendous job getting uh, people, uh, um, getting women to present at PyCon by asking everybody, including me, and I took the cue from her. And uh, for example, for last uh, uh, Guadic, I uh, asked women who participated as interns and other women in the GNOME community, and, and that had produced dramatic results for how uh, the number of speakers increased um, for Guadic. So, uh, so it's, 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 it's extremely important uh, to ask women in your communities uh, to uh, propose talks to conferences. And also one thing that I'd like to touch on is uh, often when we talk about the internships like this, um, people talk about return on investment. Um, how, um, whether the people who did the internship, whether they stuck around. And this is something that I picked up from uh, Leslie Hassler's talk, which is basically it's okay that they, if they have moved on. It, it was a privilege for us to have been able to share our values with them. And people are exploring and they will carry on those values, but it might not be with your project or um, with the same kind of field, but it's just very important already that we were able to influence uh, how they think about the world and what's possible. Um, so we've had about 40 women at last uh, GNOME's conference, and uh, we had 10 women speakers. And this is uh, Fabiana Simos, and she's uh, talking about how to report your user experience bug uh, based on her master's uh, thesis. 
and she was um, a participant uh, in the program with GNOME. So also, uh, of course, uh, the Bison community is a leader in outreach to women as well, and um, the uh, Bison Project has joined um, the Outreach Forum for Women for this round, and um, there were 14 applicants who worked with a mentor uh, to complete a contribution. And if you would like to help with this effort going forward, uh, please um, join the core mentorship list, uh, which is where all the uh, communication with the applicants happens. And um, the projects that the, uh, people will work on are in three areas. It's um, graphical Python, um, mail libraries for Python, and also improving experience, uh, documentation, and features uh, for Python on Windows. And of course, the number of women uh, given uh, talks at Python has risen dramatically. And um, here are some projects that people have done in Python as part of the outreach program for women. So those are just representative of uh, <coughs> sorry, of uh, uh, typical uh, projects that interns complete during their internships. And not surprisingly, uh, four of the people of my slide on my slide here, uh, they are at PyCon. So uh, Stacy, uh, Marta, Terry, and Cindy are at PyCon, of course, because they <laughs> They've done projects in Python. So Stacy did uh, a terrific um, talk about Twisted uh, on Friday here. And uh, during her inter internships, she worked about on the API documentation for um, Twisted um, Mail. And she also wrote um, SMTP client and server tutorials. Uh, Marta and Elaine uh, worked on GNOME. And Marta did um, a beginner's tutorial for writing uh, GNOME applications in Python. And she has also presented a poster about that at PyCon last year. And this year, her poster at PyCon was uh, about how to go to from a beginner in Python to an intermediate level, what to do. And uh, Elaine worked on um, um, uh, uh, getting things GNOME, which is a task manager for GNOME. And she added geolocation to tasks and tags and allowed um, sorting tax, tasks based on the proximity to the user. Uh, Tashvin worked on um, gazebo robot simulator for outdoor environment. And in her project, she wrote an OpenStack plugin, the, uh, oh, sorry, OpenStreetMap plugin, and uh, it took the information from uh, OpenStreetMap um, and uh, laid it out in this simulated environment so she'd represent buildings as polygons, uh, street signs, street lights, uh, roads, and including uh, the texture of the road and the number of lanes. Uh, so that was her project. And uh, several interns worked on OpenStack. And uh, Victoria did uh, user interface improvements uh, for the Horizon dashboard. Uh, Terry worked on um, sorting uh, sort API options. Uh, for the Solometer metering module. Then um, Sayali uh, took the data from the Solometer metering module and did graphs uh, to represent the data in the, in the Horizon dashboard. And Cindy worked on uh, improved uh, login and error handling uh, for the, uh, for the uh, application messaging API called Marconi. So all really cool projects, uh, very successful. And um, uh, Linux kernel community is also participating in the outreach program for women. And here you can see how uh, seven interns who worked with the kernel uh, last summer uh, did uh, more contributions than uh, some of the industry leaders. And this is a summary of um, uh, in terms of accomplishments, people go on to do talks, find employment with sponsoring organizations, um, do Google Summer of Code or Hacker School, uh, become mentors. Um, really cool things have happened uh, with uh, alumni starting their own initiatives. Uh, Mac Ford started uh, a Chicagoans Hacking on GNOME group. Uh, Marcia Chuma started an Nairobi Dev School, which is similar to Hacker School. Uh, Setup Dida started a uh, women in free software group in India. Uh, and Yekaterina Gerasimova became uh, a GNOME Foundation board member. And also uh, improving um, 
on ramps for women in in the gnome community has helped us improve on ramps for all newcomers so for example the uh, mentors list that was started for the program has grown to be a general resource with over 40 mentors that any newcomer can approach um, any time uh, to get started with the project. And also uh, we took such lessons as uh, engaging participants uh, uh, during the, the contribution process, uh, during the application process to have them make a contribution and work with a mentor during that time and also uh, having them blog um, at least every two weeks about their work and aggregating blog posts on Planet Gnome. And, and, and that improves uh, the engagement of the participants uh, with the community uh, a lot. Um, so we are almost done with the selection process for this round and we'll have internships from May to August. And then the next round uh, tentatively will have uh, an application deadline in October and internships from December to March. And uh, beyond that, so we have a good idea of how to run a program um, for women uh, to help them build this experience to start contributing to free software. Um, and um, would like to see like who else are we not reaching. And uh, to evaluate that, I'd like to mention two initiatives that are uh, close to my heart that uh, are doing a tremendous work uh, from other directions. Uh, so the Ada Initiative works on um, helping conferences adopt anti-harassment policies, organizing Ada camps, which are conferences for women interested in uh, working on improving, uh, improving participation of women in open technology and culture. It uh, runs um, allies workshops to teach, to teach allies skills about how to support women and help sexism. And it also creates uh, best practices resources. Uh, their blog is just fantastic, as I already mentioned. And uh, Open Hatch uh, has an initiative where they uh, have a curriculum for open source comes to campus workshops, which are full day workshops for students to learn about how to contribute to free software. And um, they often work with uh, women in computer science groups on campuses, so their workshops typically uh, have a lot of women participating in them. Um, so looking at that, um, other uh, metrics that we have, um, uh, women participation in Google Summer of Code has uh, grown uh, over the years, and it's uh, in part due to the outreach program for women because we encourage women who are coders and uh, students who qualify for Google Summer of Code to apply for Google Summer of Code. Um, also, initiatives such as Open Hatch and Ada Initiative help create uh, a supportive uh, climate, and uh, Google's own um, open source office team uh, does some outreach work as well. Uh, but also, Google has a Google Coden, which is a program for high school students to contribute to free software, and out of um, 40 grand prize winners in the last two years, only one was a girl. And, and when I saw this data, I was like, our work is cut out for us with outreach program for women. <laughs> so um, I'd like to do something about it. And uh, what I'd like to do is, uh, I've been talking to Open Hatch about how we can um, try to tailor their curriculum uh, to take those workshops to uh, girl coding groups. Um, so we'd need uh, those uh, groups to have already um, learn some coding. So for example, we can work with tech girls or black girls code and um, introduce girls there to contribute into free software and also offer in-person mentorship um, just in general in contributing uh, to free software but also in participation in Google code. And, and once we figure that out, um, we can um, ask other people in our uh, program alumni and mentor network and just generally broader community for everybody to just go to one high school class or one tech girls group in your area and um, offer this workshop and offer in in-person mentorship where like you can meet uh, with uh, the student at a library and kind of help her uh, uh, contribute to free software project and, and hopefully we can we can change those numbers and also I should mention that um, uh, there have been 10% uh, girls participating in Google Code in, in the last year, but just that none of them went on to, to be a, a grand prize winner. So looking at some other statistics, um, 
a lot of um, uh, practically all our participants in the last year in the outreach program for women have had a higher education or were pursuing one. Only only two um, had some college education, but were no longer pursuing it. Uh, so we're not reaching people who are less advantaged and don't have access to higher education. Also looking at the geographical data, as the countries here, uh, the countries that had more than one participant in outreach program for women. So it's, it's a little bit of an arbitrary list, but uh, the point is here to show that all those countries are in different but ways um, are represented in um, outreach program for women, Google Summer of Code and Floss Survey. Uh, but they, um, you know, they're all fairly well represented. On the other hand, we can um, look at the countries that we're not reaching at all with um, an opportunity to contribute to free software because they have been barely uh, represented in, in any of those venues. And also, uh, we don't have data for this, but we know anecdotally that there are a few people of color in our communities. And um, one interesting uh, point is that uh, in the United States, um, the number of people of color getting computer science degrees is roughly similar to their representation in, in the general population, but we're just not seeing them in our communities. And like those disparities in the way similar to how other 18% of uh, women uh, getting computer science degrees in the United States, but before all the outreach efforts, we had about two or 3% of women uh, participating in free software. Um, so the outreach program for women, we are thinking about uh, <coughs> ways to expand it, to make it an outreach program for underrepresented people, to expand it more broadly, but we do need to figure out like how we expand it in gentle ways, because uh, right now we typically have 30 to 40 participants around, and, and we need to know how to grow gently. Um, uh, a very cool initiative that uh, Lucas Black has started at Mozilla is um, the Ascent Project. And in it, uh, she's um, targeting people that um, are underemployed, uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transsexual, or queer, Latino, African American, or First Nations, uh, basically people who are underrepresented and underprivileged. And uh, it's, um, the, they're gonna have uh, six-week six pilots in Portland and in New Orleans. And uh, the goal is to make it manageable for people who live paycheck to paycheck. And uh, they're gonna accomplish this by uh, having a $50 per day honorarium for the attendees, providing laptops, providing food uh, uh, and transit passes, and the successful um, participants are gonna receive a laptop in the end so that they can continue building on the skills. And the goals uh, of uh, this bootcamp are gonna be to teach participants JavaScript, um, techniques uh, for contributing to free software, uh, build automated tests for Mozilla, and talk about what opportunities are out there, what are the next steps, introduce them to people. Um, and uh, I think this is terrific, and one of the takeaways for me, for example, is that uh, after going through this program, people will be um, very good candidates for the outreach program for the underrepresented people, which uh, which is like the format, the same format as outreach program for women that we want to evolve the outreach program for women into. And um, you can watch the space I sent project.org if you uh, would like to know more about this initiative. And the ways you can help is that you can be a teaching assistant if you are in Portland or New Orleans, or you can come and present about your work. Uh, so come find me or Lucas or um, um, there will be uh, soon an um, ascentproject.org email uh, address available. And um, so you can help this way, but also they are looking to um, <coughs> sorry, document um, the results of those two pilot programs, and they'll be looking for partners to replicate this in, in other areas, in other geographical locations. And here is how you can help with the outreach program for women. Uh, first of all, you can apply to participate. Uh, you can become a mentor if your organization is already participating. You can get your organization to participate. You can get uh, your company to sponsor internships. And uh, right now is a really great opportunity to jump in and help because um, 
Uh, we had 120 applicants for this round who completed a contribution and worked with a mentor. Right now we have funding for 37. So if your company uh, is interested in sponsoring some of the applicants that we already have, we definitely have more great applicants would love to accept uh, than 37. So you can, you can make a difference uh, right here, like right this week. And you can also uh, donate to the GNOME Foundation uh, to help us build the infrastructure to support the program. And all this information is at uh, gnome.org slash OPW. And uh, these are just some of the references to the uh, data and articles I have provided um, in the talk, and also uh, the uh, Creative Commons share-alike license. And you can find me in the program on Twitter. And I'm just going to go back to the previous slide about how you can help, and we're good for questions. Oh, thank you so much. Sure. And we do have time for questions. There's only one mic. It's over here. So please queue up over here. Questions? Um, hi. I actually have a bunch of questions, but I'll just ask one right now. Okay. Um, I noticed something really interesting in your stats about the number of participants by country. Mm -hmm. uh, India overall was huge. But it was smaller. I mean, the proportion between the, the top two is reversed between it, women and and uh, and general GSOC. Yeah, and I think more interestingly, it's there's it's even more drastically reversed between who the floss survey reached. Yes. Uh, so so uh, so I think um, the way I can explain it is that uh, Google Summer of Code is uh, hugely popular in India. It has Google brand on it. Um, and uh, also the stipend, uh, the $5,500 stipend is, uh, is a very substantial amount of money to, to get in India. Uh, so, which is why I think it's um, that Google Summer of Code is um, so popular in India and, um, and is a little less popular, but still popular in the United States. On the other hand, uh, United States has so many participants in the outreach program for women because we have so many uh, support groups, uh, women in technology groups that are developed mo much more so than in Europe. Uh, there are definitely some in India. Um, so I think it's just that they are so developed in the United States. Uh, but also kind of looking at the number for how many people have participated in the flow survey, which I do believe was spread widely to the different communities. And I think that shows us how many uh, people consider themselves um, established free software contributors um, and so uh, basically how many people um, relatively in each country go on to continue to contribute to free software and, and be connected on all those mailing lists that the survey was sent to. Well, hi, my name is Veera Venigalla. Uh, one quick question is on your slide. You said you can participate as becoming a mentor. Do you have the steps or do you have a document where it shows how we can be contribute as a becoming a mentor? Uh, so to become a mentor uh, right now, you need to be affiliated with an organization that participates. So if, um, if you're affiliated with one of the, uh, sorry, was one of these participating organizations, uh, you can become a mentor with them. And if not, you can get your organization to participate. And you can talk to me about it more. OK, I'll come back and talk to you later. Sure. Hello. Um, I'm short. I'm Paradise. I'm from Trinket. We're based in North Carolina. We love Red Hat. Um, we love your new building. It's cool. Have you seen it? And that's uh, not the right actual. Question. I'm in Boston area. Oh, cool! But, I'm but actually I from Boston. hear all about it. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. You should check it out. Um, so I have a philosophical question for you. And a debate I always have with my CEO, who's a male, is when you're trying to get people who are underrepresented into something, you need to have a representative of them as the ambassador thoughts. Yeah, it's helpful, yeah. And so how would you help more underrepresented people become ambassadors and do it? How would right. you empower them? Yeah, so, so this is why I have, um, sorry, I keep like skipping around between my slides. Um, this is why I have uh, this um, request for anyone who, f who um, feels that people like them are underrepresented to please come talk to me um, after um, the talk. 
Um, uh, and it's, I'm actually really glad that your question kind of led me to, 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 to mention that. Um, because, uh, yes, uh, like, uh, me and uh, my co-organizer, Karen Sandler, uh, we had uh, the experience that we had to be able to do the outreach program for women, but we really need uh, the advice and the leadership of people uh, who are from other underrepresented groups. And and Lucas, who started the program, uh, she felt that she came from uh, the place where she was uh, working from paycheck, uh, the Ascent project. She came from a place where she was working from um, paycheck to paycheck, and then she went into technology. So she has a kind of perspective to do the Ascent project. And that's actually all the time for questions that we have, but let's definitely move this to the hallway track. Thank you so much, Marina. All right, I'll be outside. Thanks. Awesome. And the next talk here is Software Engineering Research for Hackers, Bridging the Two Solitudes with Tavish Armstrong.